Anyways. Who's on the phone? Ben Burgess is on the phone. Yeah, Ben. Ben, are you ready? (laughs) (laughs) Ben, you ready for your song? Born ready. I want to go to mockery really bad. I will. So please go. Okay. You got to restrain me. Debunk all of it. Logical analysis. You're going to show us how to argue. This is based on data from a bunch of different countries. There's abundant evidence that uh, at this point, uh, that that's bullshit. Uh, breaking down these right-wing arguments and looking at how they're supposed to fit together. Okay, break it down. 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 Ben Burgess, he's the author of Give Them an Argument, Logic for the Left. He teaches logic and philosophy at Perimeter College at Georgia State University. He also is a proprietor of a very good Patreon page, which you should join me in becoming a patron of. And he does the debunk for us every week. Ben, what are we debunking this week? Uh, Yeah, so this is from Neera Tandon, who is the head of the uh, Center for American Progress. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, which uh, which is a institution that stands for progress in America, which you can tell from looking at a list of their funders. <laughs> you know the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, all the all the usual friends and allies of progress. Right, absolutely, of green uh, policies and equity yeah. for gay, lesbian, and transgender people. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, Ben, what did she tweet out that caught your debunk eye? Yeah, so she um, – the, the context of this is that she was talking about Medicare for all and, of course, she's advocating uh, the the Mayor Pete, um, you know, Beto O'Rourke, Joe Biden, Tulsi Gabbard, by the way, yep. uh, view, view, which is Medicare for all who want it. In other words, uh, a public option rather than a, rather than a single payer system, uh, and she cited some poll that said that most Americans don't really understand the distinction between the two anyway, or you know that most people think that Medicare for all maybe means Medicare for all for choice, uh, probably because people like her have done so much to blur the line uh, between the two and miseducate people on this topic. Uh, just parenthetically, I've got to say my all-time favorite argument against Medicare for all is, hey, when we give people all of these anti-Medicare for all talking points without any refutations, support for it goes down. <laughs> right, right. Who would have thunk that? Right. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Uh, but then she she builds up over the course of the tweets to um, to her master argument, which is right here. Imagine Trump controlling everyone's health care. Yikes. Is this on? Uh, we have this on screen. Imagine Trump controlling everyone's health care. Yikes. Obviously, uh, the word yikes is big giveaway there. Very problematic word. I would discourage its use. Uh, usually means you're ultra annoying. Um, not always, of course, but often. Uh, so I'm assuming then that she has a follow up tweet that would put this in context where she says, well, you know, come to think of it, if the federal government having control of health care by providing every single human being in this country health care coverage is frightening to me because it might mean that there is a government uh, where, and by the way, this could apply even just as easily to Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid, but it's somehow scary because Donald Trump is president. I'm assuming that the follow-up tweets, she said, (laughs) We need to immediately abolish the drone program and at least cut the military budget by like 80 percent because Donald Trump could be in control of the most powerful killing machine known to the human race. Yikes. Yeah, you would think so. Uh, Oddly enough, I didn't see those follow up tweets, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, But. It's, it's interesting because when it comes to something like the drone program, the reason to worry about a right-wing racist Republican being in control of it is pretty obvious that this gives them the unilateral power to kill people outside of war zones without a judicial process anywhere. And this power would likely be, be abused by somebody like Trump, as in fact it has been. Um, but it's a little less obvious what the, what the concern is here because – you know, you could just as easily say, hey, imagine um, 
even if you go beyond Medicare for all to a system where government has more control over health care than that, like the NHS in Britain, imagine Margaret Thatcher having control over everybody's health care. Yikes. Well, I mean, it was yikes in the sense that she like made cuts to it, but that's about it. Right. Uh, and it. And one of the things that made this really striking, and, and this is sort of worth talking about here, um, you know, besides, uh, you know, besides the fact that, you know, Nero is a friend of the show and we all like to see what she's up to, uh, is, uh, is that this is the head of one of the biggest progressive, uh, quotes, think tanks in the United States. This is somebody who is, uh, who's a name who was talked about for Hillary Clinton's chief of staff, potentially. And she's using the most kind of, um, bottom drawer, libertarian, uh, I'll bet you didn't think that argument ever. Right. Which is, no, oh it's, it's, yeah, no, it's very, dis I mean, look, I'm somebody who, after 2016, when Trump was elected, was very much of the mind that you need a left and center left alliance in the context of the Trump presidency. That's the same reason, obviously, I, you know, I mean, supported Hillary Clinton is a weird term, but understood that she needed <laughs> to be to there instead of Donald Trump. Uh, but, you know, and it's and again, it's one thing to just have, you know, look, if you want to defend having a multi tier health system that doesn't work for millions of people, uh, you know, I guess. Sure. Um you know, and I stack the deck in that description, but we can have an argument. But this is like the type of argument that again, I mean, really, it, yeah, as you say, it's it's bottom shelf libertarian stuff, and it shows, uh, you know, the real, the actual difficulty in building those alliances. Yeah. So just to, just I thought to someone like Nira Tandon, like I, I was naive. I thought like, I thought there was a set of people that might at least step slightly back from this total disingenuousness. Uh, yeah. Briefly. Right. Yeah, you you might hope. Uh, so just to just to briefly hit the obvious points here, um, Donald Trump would not in fact control everybody's health care if we had Medicare for all any more than Donald Trump controls senior citizens' health care right now, or Donald Trump controls low income people's health care right now, or Donald Trump controls every public school in the country. Just because something is a public institution doesn't mean that the president of the United States exercises direct micromanagement control over its day-to-day -day operations. Uh, that one would think would be obvious, but uh, apparently it needs to be said. Uh, he, uh, he certainly can damage it in the sense that he can propose or sign off on cuts to it. But if you're worried about that, that actually gives you a reason to support Medicare for all, not a reason to oppose it. Because if you're worried about cuts, well, if you have something like Medicaid that's means tested, so lots of people, lots of working people don't think that it's ever going to apply to them, even though it might, right? They might very well need Medicaid at some point. You know, they don't think, you know, it's, it's easy for them to think that that's there for somebody else, maybe somebody who doesn't look like them. Whereas when you have universal programs, and I've got to say, this is based on data from a lot of different countries, right? We have, <laughs> nice. we have a lot of evidence for this. Uh, if you have universal programs that everybody knows that, they, that you know, everybody is paid for, everybody benefits from, everybody knows they're going to benefit from it going forward, it's much, much harder to cut those programs, which – you'd think would be obvious just from looking even at domestic American examples, much less examples like what we talked about last week with the debate with Destiny about Canada and how Canadian conservatives were opposed to Medicare for all when it was first proposed, but now they don't dare come out against it. Look at the United States. How many, uh, how many Republicans come out and say we should abolish Social Security? They wouldn't dare. So Right. Or if they do, they lie about it. Um, Canada. Yeah. So, uh, Ben? Thank you so much. Uh, Artesia, do you have anything to add to the debunk? Um, I mean, the real yikes is all the people who would die without getting a checkup, like, you know, Indeed. making sure that they have basic access to, you know, just making sure their bodies work. So, yeah, that's the real yikes. That's the real yikes. Ben Burgess, <laughs> give them an argument. Logic for the left. Thanks so much, brother. Uh, thank you. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. 
Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.